Ghostbusters 2 came out in 1989 and is once again directed by Ivan Reitman, once again written by Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd, and once again stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, and Rick Moranis. And this movie takes place five years after the first one, like how the sequel came out five years after the first one, eh. And even though the Ghostbusters saved the city back in the day of the first movie, they got a lot of court orders, they got sued a bunch, and the Ghostbusters went bankrupt, they went their own separate ways. Winston and Ray sometimes go to birthday parties, Egon's got his own science-y thing going on, and Peter Venkman has his own psychic TV show. But when a new paranormal thing threatens Sigourney Weaver and her new baby, not Peter Venkman's because they split, she met another man, and they had a kid, but that guy left. When that happens, the Ghostbusters look into it, and they need to form together once again to stop this evil. Now, in my last review, I mentioned I saw the first Ghostbusters a long time ago. I didn't even know when, and in Ghostbusters 2, the same thing. I saw those two movies at the same time. I don't remember when, though. And I thought both of them were fine, enjoyable movies, and as I mentioned in the previous review, I actually got a better experience with the first Ghostbusters after watching it recently, so I was hoping that maybe I would get a better experience at a Ghostbusters 2 as well. And did I... Not really. Is it still a good movie, though? Yeah. The entertainment factor that the first movie had is still here. No surprise, because it's from the same director and writers. I thought every joke in this movie was hilarious, all well told by the characters and the team once again. I thought they had really good chemistry with each other. They bounced off each other really well. They could tell they were friends. And once again, I think Bill Murray was trying to steal the show. He had some of the best jokes. And it was really funny when during his psychic show, one of the psychics said the world was going to end February 14th, 2016. And then he said, Valentine's Day. Bummer. It's like, hey, that date just passed. That's actually really cool. The ghost busting scenes are still really fun to watch because of the charisma of all the actors, because of the jokes being told. They are a lot of fun to watch. This movie is a fun Time. I find it really hard to believe that someone who's a fan of the first movie can just flat out hate this movie because in some ways it's pretty much the same thing. However, that leads me to my big flaw with this movie. It's pretty much almost the same thing as the first movie. The setup for this movie was actually really good. The Ghostbusters business going bankrupt, so they have to go their separate ways. They've been separated for like five years almost. They've been doing their own thing, but now they have to team up once again. They have to get used to each other again. That could be really cool to see, except they don't do that last part. The first 15 minutes is pretty much showing the setup of them doing their own separate things, Sigourney Weaver's babies in a stroller rolling down the street because ghosts. And after we see that, then we see the other setups of Peter, Ray, Winston, and Egon. As soon as that's over, we immediately see a scene with Egon and Ray talking in Ray's new bookstore, talking about Dana because Dana approached uh, Egon during his science-y thingy. So now they're talking and they're looking into the threat and then, oh look, Peter just walked in 30 seconds after they started the scene and they talk as if they saw each other the other day and they were just hanging out again. You'd think that maybe the Ghostbusters business going bankrupt would maybe affect them in some way. Maybe they had a big falling out as friends and maybe they need to work together again. Maybe they need to learn how to be friends again. No, apparently these guys, they're, they automatically are friends every time they see each other. And as I mentioned, Dana and Bill Murray, they split. She married another man. That man left her and left her with a kid. So you'd think that maybe Bill Murray's gonna want to get back together with Dana but maybe have some issues you with the baby? No. Because after that scene that I mentioned in the bookstore, they immediately go to Dana's apartment to check it out, and Peter's there telling his one-liners, and Dana is automatically charmed by it, smiling by this charisma machine of a man that is Bill Murray. I mean, yes, Bill Murray is really funny, so it's kind of obvious why people would laugh at him, because he's really good, but shouldn't there be some kind of tension here? Instead of just, oh, you're so funny, Peter. Yeah, I know. Even the baby aspect doesn't really seem to bother him. Ray tells him he needs to get a stool sample from the baby, and he's just, you know, making funny noises, entertaining the baby, making it laugh, and then the Dana comes in and smiles because Peter's such a nice guy. So they pretty much just wasted some sort of subplot that could have caused some dramatic tension later on in the movie. And they also pretty much wasted the tension of them needing to learn how to be friends again because they're automatically getting to work on this case. That's my big problem with the movie. It just felt like they were trying to be as entertaining as the first movie, so they just completely waste some dramatic tension that could have been infused in this movie that could have made this a better sequel. Even the finale at the end of the movie feels pretty much the same as the first movie. A giant figure shows up, the first one being the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. This one, it's the stack Statue of Liberty. That looked really cool, by the way. There's a crowd outside of a building where all the paranormal things are happening, and they're cheering the Ghostbusters on. Yeah! The Ghostbusters bust
tossed in, they're ready to fight, but after a while they get knocked down by the villain, but then after that they get right back up, shoot it, and then it's gone. And then after this big fight concludes, they finish off some one-liners and they walk outside to the cheering crowd to the sound of the Ghostbusters theme song. It was pretty much the same thing, and I wasn't a fan of that. And I get the first movie was just pretty much an entertaining movie, I get it. There wasn't really a lot of dramatic stuff going on in that one, I know. But this is the sequel. It's time to do something a little different because we've already seen the first movie. You can't just recreate the first one and expect people to get a different experience out of it. So as entertained as I was by it, I couldn't help but think that they probably could have made a way better sequel. They could have actually developed the characters a lot more. They just didn't do it. There's even one scene that just happens for no reason that could have caused dramatic tension, but didn't. If you remember in the first movie, they had a guy that was trying to shut down the Ghostbusters. They make a new character that's pretty much the same guy, and this guy actually sends the Ghostbusters to the loony bin because he thinks they're going to mess up the mayor's campaign for... I don't know. So we get a shot of them being taken away with straight jackets on to, into the loony bin. Like, oh, are they going to interact with some crazy people? What's gonna, What kind of comedic situations are going to come out of this? But then as soon as the mayor finds out that he did it, he fires that guy and tells him, get the Ghostbusters out. And then we get a shot of the Ghostbusters running down a hall, putting on their uniform. And we don't see them at all inside the loony bin. Just them walking out like nothing had happened. That, why, what was the purpose of that? The closest thing we get to actual character development sort of is Rick Moranis comes back in this movie and he has a really funny relationship with the secretary from the first movie and by the way I didn't talk about the secretary in the first review she was really funny that was the closest character development we got was their relationship while they're babysitting Dana's kid that was actually a pretty funny scene unfortunately Rick Moranis doesn't have that much to do either he thinks he does something at some point but he didn't do anything and I can say one more disappointing thing about the movie was that the visual effects there are some that I think still hold up there's a slime bathtub moment that I think was really well done. The Scolari brothers, I think, was a really fun sequence. But Slimer, what happened to him? He Not only does he look different, but he doesn't look as good as he did in the first movie. There are also just some other random special effects that I don't think held up as well as maybe they wanted to or held up like the first movie's special effects did. But overall, this is a fun movie. I don't think this is an unnecessary sequel at all because it is fun. The actors are really funny. They got a lot of charisma and chemistry with each other. And this is an entertaining movie. I just can't help but think they could have made a way better sequel. And maybe they could have made this The Empire Strikes Back to the first movie. So for those reasons, I'm gonna give Ghostbusters 2 a B minus. As much as I was entertained by it, I just couldn't help but feel like they were just shamelessly trying to recreate the first one, and that's not good enough. We need something more. This is the sequel. It's been five years. We need something else. But if you've seen Ghostbusters 2, leave in the comments below of what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Vulture. See you guys next time.